appointed hour, so we'll call the meeting to order. And we're going to read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 9th of January 2020, first of the new decade. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Massachusetts Department of Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance and made by public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues so they're within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes a notice of intent for parking lot extension, expansion and related stormwater work uh, within the buffer zone to uh, bordering vegetative and wetland. Uh, on Harlem Drive, uh, and a notice of intent for contractor storage yard expansion within the riverfront area uh, of Barrett Brook off David Road. Also, uh, request for a certificate of compliance on Riverside Drive and approval of uh, acquisition of agriculture preservation restriction in uh, Mineral Hills. Uh, we begin with asking first if there uh, uh, well, first notice that uh, we are being recorded. It is working today? Yes. Okay. Uh, and ask if there's any general public comments, not specific to any particular case. Uh, if not, we'll go first with the approval. So, so oh, I, yes. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm not here for, my name's George Kohout. I live down on State Street. I'm not here for any application specific, but uh, I serve on the planning board, so I'm just interested in seeing kind of one of the hearings. It's been a while that I've experienced the cons come and often our business kind of overlaps. So I'm just back here observing. So thank you very much for me. Good of you to come. Right. Planning board spy. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, we had uh, two sets of minutes that Sarah sent around, uh, one from June and one from September. Uh, August. So it was August and September? Um, and I didn't print them out, but I looked at them uh, the only comment um, I had was wondering whether in the uh, uh, the comments that uh, Lily Lombard made uh, that uh, were listed under general public comment, they also had to do specifically with a case that was being considered that day, and I wonder if that should be mentioned uh, in that section. I mean, she was speaking in terms of. Uh, uh, shade tree benefits in general, but it had to do with the specific case. Yeah, she spoke twice, once uh, sort of generally and another I time specifically. So you want to do separate now, I know. Okay. Um, so let's take the August one first. Any uh, motion for approval minutes? Oh, we have a motion. And second. And second. Any uh, amendments, modifications? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. And then the uh, September 26 minutes, uh, one, one of the minutes, one motion for the approval of those minutes. So moved. And a second? Second. And uh, any modifications or amendments? If not, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. And then uh, first case today, a notice of intent for parking lot expansion of the Northampton Fire Department and Carl Underwood. Kind of off there, excuse myself for this one. Understood. Which, um, should I go inside the hall? I, I'm, I'm comfortable with you staying, but uh, are there, as far as I understand the rules, Sarah, that it is permitted for him to stay but not participate? Correct. That's a good spot. Everybody see? Yep. My name is Mary Zawatsky. I'm here from Time Bond. I'm here on behalf of the Northampton Central Services Department to talk about the Fire Rescue Headquarters Parking Lot Improvement Project. Um, we have been issued our DP file number and we have received comments from DP. Um, so what the project is, is it's located at 26 Carlon Drive in Northampton. Um, so that's across the street from the Northampton Athletic Club, Tan Bagel, uh, guys over there. The goals of the project are to expand the existing parking lot to have more spaces, 
uh, to improve access to the fuel tank for fire trucks and to create a backup power supply with a solar canopy and to improve stormwater management throughout the site. So the parcel is approximately two acres. It's zoned as highway business. And there is a bordering vegetated wetland located on the western portion of the site. So the green line here represents the bordering vegetated wetland. The orange line represents the 10 foot uh, protected zone under the Northampton uh, Wetlands Protection Ordinance. And the yellow line is the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the pink line is uh, proposed erosion controls that we'll talk about. So this is the existing site. And that's sheet three in the packet, right? Yes. Um, this is the existing conditions plan. Um, so you can see the fire department building is right here. Uh, car lot drive is right up here. This is the parking lot. Um, right here is a maintained lawn. And then back here is unmanaged woody vegetation. Um, and then there's the wetland back here. So, um, the current fueling system is right here, um, and the fire trucks aren't able to come in, fuel up, and then pull through and turn around. They have to back out. It's creating a safety hazard. Um, also, there's not enough parking lot uh, spaces during the training events and um, during emergency responses. So, um, there's a real need for this parking lot to have more spaces. Uh, for the fire department. So I'll flip to the proposed escape plan. So for the proposed site plan, you can see the parking lot extends much further west. Um, the fueling system has moved down over here, so the fire trucks are able to pull through, um, get the fuel, and then pull out of the parking lot without having to turn around. Um, there's more parking spaces, like I said, um, and so the parking lot came into the area that was the maintained lawn. Um, so there will be a total of 64 parking spaces. Uh, there, um, on the next site plan, I'll show we're going. We're proposing a stormwater management system um, that includes a stormwater basin to mitigate the effects of the additional impervious area, and also new a uh, new treatment unit on the existing stormwater uh, management system that's located um, down here next to the building, um, and that will provide additional additional treatment to improve stormwater quality. So. So, right over here where it was unmanaged woody vegetation, um, now is a stormwater management area. So this is treating some of the water that's coming off of the parking lot. Um, some of it that previously was untreated. Uh, now flows into the uh, management system and then out to the wetland. Um, the stormwater that's generated in the area surrounding the uh, fueling system is directed into that uh, swale next to the building and then to the new treatment system um, before entering the town municipal stormwater system. Um, is the plan for the solar uh, the solar panels that are going to be in the canopy over the parking lot. Um, so this is going to provide power during emergencies. If the power goes out of the fire department, it's increased res resiliency, um, so they don't have to rely on a backup generator that requires fuel. They can depend on um, the solar panels, and they actually received a DOER grant to install that. Um, so. Um, the proposed work in jurisdictional areas includes the removal of nine trees 
within the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the clearing of that uh, vegetated, woody vegetated area. And um, in table for one of the NOI, uh, we have about 6,000 square feet for the new stormwater management uh, area. The reconfigured parking lot is about 7,000 square feet into the buffer zone. Um, and additional lawn areas that will be next to the stormwater management area and then uh, in areas on the parking lot. And so like I said, um, we're proposing um, proposing uh, compost filter tubes um, along the 10 foot protected zone and down here to limit the contractors to the area um, and to limit the amount of erosion and sedimentation in wetland areas. And once, this, once the project is complete, they'll seed and loam any disturbed areas and they're going to be planting two additional trees here along um, the Carline Drive tree area. Um, that's it. That's it on my end, like I said, we received our DEP file number. Um, we received comments from DEP. We received comments as well from Sarah. And we addressed those comments and submitted them to the commission um, for your review. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions from the commission? Yeah. <coughs> What's um, the approximate elevation at the wetlands edge? Looks okay, like 140. 140, a little bit below 145, four? I think. Yeah. Um, at the bottom of the, retent, the infiltration area is mm -hmm. not much above that. Uh, my concern is uh, there's a, for the whole Carlin Drive, there's a so-called detention pond at the end, mm -hmm. um, which worked for almost a year. And now it's filled with water, um, including the four bay. Uh, last time I looked uh, at it, uh, there was a beaver coming in through the uh, outlet pipe and chewing on all the New England environmentalists uh, planted. Oh. So uh, my concern is that the same thing is going to happen in this infiltration. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to fill with water, especially if you have a lot of beaver and muskrat activity, which is prevalent in the marsh out there. And it starts to raise all of the marsh, and then it's going to back up into the your, your little pond there. Yeah. And it really won't function as an infiltration anyway. So that was that was one of my major concerns. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some mention of some of the soils there, but I didn't see soil logs. So I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm not work, sure where the water table is. Oh, yeah, um, as far as the ponded area, I don't think the intention is for it to serve as being ponded, at least for very long. I think it's for it during the storm events. Um, and I'm not sure about the water table. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do know that the stormwater permit application was, was reviewed. Um, as part of our planning board submittal, and there were test pit logs provided as part of that application. But you're right; I don't think they were provided as part of the stormwater report in the NOI. Um, yeah, they they mentioned that they went down 10 feet before the uh, uh, any water table, but they were uh, said that the water table might be assumed to be the elevation of the water because of the soil types. That um, and so there's very little difference between the bottom of the infiltration basin and the elevation of the water. And the area has 
had notorious beaver and muskrat activity that's, that's raised the level of the water such that the detention basin was originally constructed doesn't even function anymore. Um, I think uh, Stonker Shop had a problem with, with their detention basin also. Yeah, I, and I'm not the I'm not an engineer who worked on the stormwater design. I do know that um, the uh, stormwater management basin the design is an infiltration. It's not meant to detain water for very long, so it's meant to address peak rate runoff. And there's a peak um, peak stone portion that's meant to help infiltrate um, slowly, but infiltrate after each event. So. I, I totally understand if, 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 you're, if you're focused on um, a wetland that's further downstream that might back up and impact the ability of this basin to function. Um, but I don't know that that was a question or focus of the planning board um, during the, their review. So we can definitely can pass on the question to the engineer. Um, I guess I, I didn't see you know, the actual elevation of what when they refer to a narrative and uh, the actual elevation of the water table, they did mention a lot of modeling and uh, reducing more of the soils, but which indicates to me that there's been a lot of work in the water. I think the comment about the redox features outside of the wetland and the in the upland area had to do with a layer of urban fill um, and, and uh, trash that was in the soil. Um, basically, stormwater was trapped on top of it, and that's why it's creating the redox features. So I think that's what they noted in the in the logs. Well, like I said, we didn't have the soil. Other questions from the commission? So do I understand correctly the current stormwater system with the smaller parking lot is headed out toward King Street? So the existing um, system is that some of the parking lot stormwater goes directly to the wetland and some of it goes down to a swale that's next to the building, a grass swale that right. Um, eventually makes it to the municipal stormwater system. So with the expanded 60 something more spaces, so, so that explain to me, so the continued slope toward the swell will stay right. for the front part of the parking lot, the back part of the parking lot will have this expanded system mm -hmm. that we're talking about. And how is it currently working with the swell? How is that functioning, that managing? I believe it's being managed effectively, but we do propose improvements um, because of that uh, defueling system that's going to be installed there. Mm -hmm. So the current the drainage swale that's um, to the south and east mm -hmm. of the building was installed in 1998. It's a grassland swale mm -hmm. uh, heads up to King Street, mm -hmm. and as part of this project, when they uh, proposed to relocate the, the fueling island from the center of the site to the southern portion of the site. Um, as part of our design, we added a ridge just to the west of the fueling island so that stormwater that flows on that eastern portion of the site is redirected to that swale, and they've added an oil grit separator at the end to treat the stormwater that heads out that way. Um, and the western portion of the site, the stormwater will head toward that new stormwater basin. So where previously it flowed into the directly into the wetland, now it'll get additional treatment. So is there there's intermingling with the fuel spill spill from on the pavement toward the swale? Is that why you created the ridge? Uh, the, the ridge was to direct the surface flow, right. like uh, rainfall events and precipitation right. from to to direct the rainfall toward that swale. Right, so it's directing it away from the wetland and so that it's treated in a stormwater treatment system 
rather than going directly into the wetland. So the ridge is right here, mm -hmm. and I believe this area adds a little bit of elevation too to contain it. Is there an issue with fuel spillage and the water that's the stormwater mixing with that? Um, so it's what I do know is that we've added an oil grit separator to the end of that swale for additional treatment, and there's also containment around the fuel island, similar to a gas station where they have the grooves mm -hmm. around the edges for any fuel spills that happen. Mm -hmm. So the oil grit was a response to the earlier review of the application. Mm -hmm. Was is there a sense of uh, magnitude of oil spill that would exceed the containment area and make it to the swim? Um, I don't know, but I do know that the fuel oil response trucks that would respond to the spill are parked in the garage that's uh -huh. right Close there, right here. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we don't have to go very far. We, I, I think that there's a, probably a good opportunity. I, I'm not. To, I don't mean to be snarky, but I think that that anything that did happen would would happen. You know, a response would happen fairly quickly there. But I don't have an answer in terms of numbers um, for the containment. And I'd be happy to look that. What, what's a uh, compost filler tube? I just didn't run across them. So they're those. They look like logs that you spread. Um, so basically, they track the water so that the sediment can fall out of it rather than. So I, I, I've seen those. I didn't know that's what they were called. Yep. Why, why the term compost? Do they actually decay over that? Compostable? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the. the sock. Yeah, compost right. from wood chips. Wood chips. That's just wood chips. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other questions from commissioners? Uh, DPW had a, a really technical observation about the type of 24-hour rainfall that was right. analyzed. So, I, I can send it to email. Okay. Um, he, um, DPW suggested that the SCS, NRCS type 3 be used rather than the type 2, um, and updated precipitation depths from NOAA Atlas 14. Okay. And do you want to translate that into uh, uh, basically, the the rainfall twenty four hour number that was analyzed was not quite uh, correct for the site, so it should be redone. Oh. Maybe significant enough to change some of the drainage calculations. Probably not, but it it should be checked just to make sure. Thank you. I'm just curious about the need for the extension of the do you know what, why the request for, what are, are we doubling the parking lot here? Um, not doubling it. Um, so the total is 64. We're not adding 64 oh, spots. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so basically, if there's a training event and everybody's there with their cars, and yeah, then there's an emergency right. event at the same time, yeah, we approximate that'll be about 65 vehicles that would be there. So there really is the need instead of having people park along Carlin Drive and yeah. kind of create this safety hazard. And the solar is so you were parking under the solar. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. And two trees only you're taking down nine and you're planning two? Yeah, so the, the thing is with the solar canopy, um, it's not suggested to plant a bunch of trees next to it. So, right. um, yeah, so that is, that's what we got. <laughs> is there any, is there a statutory requirement that uh, replacement of uh, trees removed in terms of square area of the trees? No, no not, a, not a statutory requirement. These weren't significant trees pursuant to the um, significant tree ordinance, so the planning board wouldn't require that, and there, there's nothing specific for the process protection. So it's mostly an aesthetic question rather than a resource area question? I mean, it, it is a resource area question because they are in the, in the, um, oh, in in the buffer zone, zone. But, but there's not any specific requirement for it. Would they plant shrubs that wouldn't grow above the uh, canopy? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, any of that mitigation would be um, something the commission could discuss. Well, another thing that was missing besides the soil blocks was um, the information on how the wells is determined, the transects, um, the 
species that were located and so on. Normally, they'll set apart enormous amount of times. Yeah. So, um, there's 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 two ones particular forms that DDP likes filled out for the wetlands uh, determination, which incidentally hasn't been confirmed yet because it's winter time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, let's see. So, in section 2.3, uh, we provide a description of the wetland. Um, so, it's characterized as a broadly deciduous cholesterol scrub shrub and cluster forest as well. Um, so we've identified sensitive fern, honeysuckle, glossy buckthorn, oriental bittersweet, locust, red maple, gray birch, musclewood, and cottonwood within the wetland. Yeah, um, I'm looking for the more detailed sheets that are filled out right. that do percentages, and especially along the transect mm -hmm. line, so you know where the yeah. natural boundary is. Um, there's, there's also, normally, um, soil samples done with an auger, and these are also part of the forms for determining the well niche. Um, we didn't have any information. Just a general description. <coughs> so we, we did take soil samples and did transects, and if you'd like those forms, we're happy to we provide would, them yes. for you. Sure. And we'll no doubt need to continue anyway to a point where it's not winter anymore, and then we can actually see where the boundaries are. What's the proposed uh, interior of the, the detention basin line, lining? Is it going to be lawn, or is it going to be naturalized vegetation in that area? I believe it's grass. Grass. Right up to the edge of the detention area, more of the form. Right. Yeah. 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 Other questions from commissioners? Any comments? Any further comments, Sarah? Uh, not at this point. Um, so, is there other, since they're reconsidering, is there any information we need about fuel spills? Uh, and the plans had changed a little bit to direct those fuel spills to that the grass well, soil area in an, in the event of a large spill. Assuming maybe the fire department trucks are far away dealing with something else, would any of that spill uh, be directed to the west or west, or would it all flow into the grass grass as well? <coughs> I believe it would all flow this direction because of the grade. That's why it's graded. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, uh, containment ridge around the fuel area, or is it just graded to you know, just, just cut the buildings? So to, I mean, it'd be interesting. I'd be interested to know what uh, what volume of spill would be uh, necessary before it expands beyond the immediate area and ends up in the soil. I and mean, presumably having the the uh, oil separator at the end of the soil. Uh, and a quick response of uh, proper equipment would prevent it from going much beyond this way. But I'd be interested to know what it would take, how big a spill it would take before it got into this way. Okay, we can find that out. Or if there are some combination of moderate spill during heavy, heavy precipitation. Ah, that's the point. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you get that with your uh, fuel to the water? So we're going to continue, but before we do, uh, any other comments, questions from the public? 
So if not, so we want to make a motion to continue. We were, we're looking ahead at uh, what are our dates in uh, April, sir? Uh, the 9th and 23rd. I'm guessing it would be. Yeah, I think that might be a little too soon. Yeah, depending on what happens at the end of March, we might still be digging out for the first week of April. So we're going to the second meeting in April, which will be the 23rd. And do we have anything on that agenda yet? Yeah. To make this first 5.30? Anyone want to make a motion to continue to that time and date? So, so moved. And uh, a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. May I make one comment at this point? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or a request. Um, Given that it's going to be continued and the commission has questions, would you all be willing to put your questions in writing and we could respond to those prior to the April hearing as an administrative? Okay, okay yeah, that would be. Sarah, you probably captured yeah. mm -hmm. almost all of those already. So they'll be in the minutes. But yeah, Excellent. And I do know that, that um, the goal is to start construction in spring, mm -hmm. uh, early okay. spring 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, and I understand the constraints about the delineation, but I just am putting it out there that it will be helpful to be able to respond to the comments. And so that we can make sure all of our information requests are available before then, and mm -hmm. presumably we can act quickly and we can proceed. Okay. Yeah, sure. great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next case, a notice of intent for contract with Swedish Air Expansion in the Middle area. Uh, this on Damon Road. Thank you. Generally, they revolve around uh, what degraded land really is, whether this can be concerned, can, uh, defined as degraded land. And, uh, I think I'm happy to discuss that. So, a couple of things to show. I think these were submitted, but I'd like to just make sure every, every board member has a copy, the conservation member has a copy. This uh, is a photo from Google Earth 1995. These are <laughs> These are readily available. Uh, if anyone has Google Earth, you can use the time feature to go back in time. It'll bring you back to 1995 to this exact photo. Where these would be pictures of the site current condition. Basically. Shows that the stockpile has, uh, over time, been overtaken with woody vegetation. That the aerial photo is tough to see, but what you're going to be able to see is the outline of the stockpile area that corresponds to this purple area on this plan. And you'll also see that that stockpile area is probably a conservative estimate of the clearing area that existed in 1995 in this project location. So uh, it's our feeling that this would be a use of a continued use of the property within a previously degraded area of the site and a conservative estimate of that. We're uh, proposing that a 75-foot buffer is created along uh, a Bartlett Brook here. 
Um, that would be a reduction in the degraded area that we see on the photos. We see that degraded area being about 55 feet from Bartlett Brook. We were proposing a mitigation effort in order to lessen the effects of previously degraded areas. And then the remaining area would be graded to be flat in order to be a contractor storage yard. The purpose of this project would be to store heavy equipment uh, for the Baltazar company. They're working on the roundabout project at the inter at intersection of uh, Cooley Bridge and Interstate 91, as well as the southbound lane of Interstate 91 uh, near the Y, exit. So they have a couple of large projects, which will help them mobilize uh, in a more cost-effective manner. Uh, generally, I see this as a, a significant improvement over existing conditions. Uh, severe slopes here would, would push runoff and, and high velocities into Bartlett Brook. The removal of the stockpile would slow uh, stormwater velocities and also point them in a direction that's not directly entering uh, Bartlett Brook. Additionally, as, as shown, that buffer to Bartlett Brook from degraded area uh, would be increased to 75 feet. No work is proposed within a 50 foot no touch line. And uh, the final uh, surface would be a gravel surface in this area. So, uh, Mark Stinson, I believe, uh, gave us some comments. Mm -hmm. um, area photos submitted uh, do not appear to justify the assertion that the degraded area on the property, one must have had degraded area there in 1996 and it must be there now. So, here we go to the definition of what a degraded area is. Um, we'll get into that in the second comment, but. As you see, in 1995, aerial photos show that there was a clearing over top of where this pile was. I think we agree that that, that is a fact. Uh, the comment number two is here is the definition of degraded. A previously developed riverfront area degraded prior to August 7, 1996 by impervious surfaces from existing structures or pavement, absence of topsoil, junkyards, or abandoned dumping grounds, Please note that contains means present tense. Degraded area is also based on specific square footage and not usually the entire area of the site. Uh, so the limit of degraded riverfront area uh, was shown on the conservation planning plan and was determined uh, by the lack of topsoil, it's a gravel storage area, and the presence of an abandoned dumping ground, that dumping ground being this large uh, pile, stockpile of materials, unknown source. The limit is consistent with the 1995 aerial, footage, aerial uh, photo provided, and the square footage of the degraded group front area was calculated based on an on-the-ground survey by RLA. Total lines you see here are based on an on-the-ground survey. Um, third comment from him, based on information included in the NOI, it does not appear that sufficient information has been included to show that the performance standards are met. Uh, historical photos dating back to 1962 do not appear to show a contractor's yard where the degraded area is alleged to be located and no current aerial pho photographs are included in the NOI to justify the degraded area. I think the original submission did not include the aerial photo you have uh, in front of you. After submission, we were able to send you that uh, diagram. So our response to that comment would be that historical photos from 1962 do not show contractor's yard, we agree on that, but that uh, Google Earth imagery from 1995 onwards visibly shows there would be a contractor's yard, and that would fall before the time frame required to be considered a created area. Um, the 1995 aerial has been overlaid against RLA's existing uh, survey and was presented on the notice and intent filing plan to compare historic disturbance versus survey boundaries. So, uh, in my experience, those aerial photos, depending on where you get them from, they, they don't always overlap perfectly. I think you can understand that. Uh, but that generally they'll land within uh, five feet, 10 feet, um, usually five feet up to 10 feet uh, from year to year. So we did our best to overlay that uh, historic aerial photo with our survey. I think we did a pretty good job on it. And again, it shows a conservative edge of a stockpile. You can see that the clearing is much larger than that uh, stockpile area that we're claiming to be degraded. Uh, one question I have after reading Simpson's uh, comments about uh, the developed area does not necessarily imply the degraded area. Um, and Correct. That, how do we know from this 
uh, aerial, that this area was actually degraded just because it's not fully Great question. And um, I think what we're using is the, the idea that there was a cleared area. Uh, I think we can agree on that, whether there was a stockpile. I think that's the question you're asking. When you, uh, I think the colored photos that were given to you are pictures of that stockpile area. It's going to be impossible to determine when that uh, stockpile was created, but the age of the vegetation growing on top of the stockpile would lead one to believe that it, it has been there for quite a long time. Based on the quality of that 1995 aerial survey, it's gonna, you're not going to be able to determine if the stockpile was there or not. Um, so the fourth and fifth comments really get to um, if it's not considered degraded area, what do we do from from here? So um, I think we're looking for a determination of how you see this area, whether you consider it as a degraded area. I'd like to just get back to the fact that um, sure. I, I, I see the vegetation there is something that's been there for a long period of time. I can't say exactly when, but I, I would say that this does represent an improvement over existing conditions. Do you know what's in this pile besides the vegetation that's on top? No, we, we don't. And so part of the removal that the material would be evaluated and if it could be used as a structural uh, backfill, it would be. But if it was found to have anything, any sort of building debris or anything which is possible, I'm not sure if it's probable, we can't really say what it what it is, but it would be trucked off site in that situation and disposed of property. The proposed use is also used to place stockpiles of material? There. Yeah, and, yep, it would be uh, this Parking of heavy machinery at the end of days and bring it to the stock area park and then use it again the next day, as well as uh, additional stockpiling area. So, so the site currently is uh, this would be the 200 foot riverfront offset. Uh, this whole area is an area that's used currently as a contractor storage yard, but uh, it is not sufficient for the needs of the applicant. So, therefore, it's looking for additional places to store vehicles and material. After the material is gone that's currently there, then the site is sort of redeveloped for a staging area. Is there any um, measures going to be installed to prevent surface water runoff, erosion from happening, that kind of thing from all the equipment and material that's going to be then stored there? Uh, none that are proposed right now, but something like that could be added. A swale or berm could be added in order to really contain stormwater to the upper plateau of the site. Uh, there will be, a, there's a stockpile that con continues uh, towards the northeast. Since this is off-site, we wouldn't be able to adjust this stockpile. So you, you, what you're seeing with the, with the topography is that stormwater, would, there would be a ridge right here, and stormwater would flow in this general direction, and then make its way into part of the slowly. But I think that's a really valid concern, and something that we could address is putting in some sort of check dam or stormwater. BMP, or direct water quality. Uh, in addition to storm, the stormwater runoff, has there been any assessment of whether taking this, uh, removing the stockpile, leveling that ground, uh, will affect the structural stability that close to the to the brook? And if you're putting heavy machinery on it, if that's going to uh, have any impact on on erosion due to the weight of those machines? If the proposed contours end up spacing themselves at a pretty uh, gentle slope, uh, as well as this steep bank would be located here, uh, probably about 25 feet away from Bartlett Brook, we're going to maintain a 50 foot no touch, as well as expand that mitigation area to, to provide 75 feet of buffer distance from Bartlett Brook. Uh, based on that distance and the uh, relatively flat uh, grading of the proposed use area, uh, there shouldn't be any structural stability concerns. Beyond um, the heavy equipment you propose to store it through there? I, I, no, I, that is not our intention.
And so I've been out there several times going through up to the uh, uh, what's now the crew uh, map. But uh, I don't remember this place well. Did you do a site visit? I didn't. Yeah. Um, I did one once in Boston. Yeah. Prior to the filing, I think um, in the fall, but I, uh, then it snowed and the application was filed, so I haven't been able to assess the, uh, uh, the delegation. But I mean, there, there definitely is a big pile on the site. Um, as noted in, in the discussion, it's not presented what, what it is. It could potentially be topsoil. Um, and do you know what's under the pile? No. No soil warnings were done. I mean, it's in a riverfront protection areas. There's no work done out there yet. Do you have a floodplain issue? I don't believe so. I suppose you can start if you really want to get very fast. I think we would make sense. Yeah, this isn't within uh, NAP floodplain. The Northampton Wetlands Ordinance has a 40 foot buffer to oh, floodplain, yeah. but that shouldn't come into play here. Either way. Our research did not show any problem affecting this project. Mm -hmm. okay. Getting back to the degraded area and whether the mound is present, I think it's, it is going to be really difficult. Uh, so we're, we're looking at this being used as either a dumping ground or the removal of topsoil, both of those being qualifications to be considered a degraded area. Um, Understanding the use of the property back in 1995 and seeing those aerial photos and the uh, size of the contract yard out there, I think it would be pretty uh, safe to assess that topsoil was removed from this area. So the stockpile continues uh, further north into the next property? That's correct. Is that used for the, is that the property uh, used for the uh, saving yard? No, it's not currently owned by the applicant. So it is not part of this project. No storage would be taking place there. Right, I understand. Is, um, is the, was the, oh. Yeah, so uh, 310 CMR 10.585A in part states when a lot is previously developed but no portion of riverfront area is degraded, the right. requirements. Oh, I see. Then, uh, okay. So that's a conditional. Okay. So we're, at first, we're going to consider the degradation of the property and then move from there. Right. So the question is right before us is how much degradation is needed before? Regarding the spring degraded, I think that's a question. Today. And without uh, walking around, it's um, a little unclear to me. Uh, I've been through there, and I have to say, yeah, it looks like an active work site. Yeah. Um, but whether that constitutes um, being degraded, I wasn't looking at it with that in mind. I was on my way through, so I was looking at that. It's like visits are always helpful, uh, but this one, I think you'll see there's woody debris on it, but again, whether there was clearing on top of the mound after it was caught, built, and there's a lot of speculation as to the age of the stock mine, and, and it's going to be really near impossible to determine if it was there in 1995, or we just have to make a best guess that it, it was, and if it wasn't, that it was topsoil was removed in that area. I, for me, those aerial photos seem to show that a much larger area than we're claiming was used as a contractor's storage yard and active construction. 
construction area. I know my opinion isn't all that important, but I, I see it falling under either a, a uh, abandoned dumping site or the removal of topsoil. But if this is the topsoil from the entire site piled up in a big pile, that would not be a degree. Agreed, but then you would see that there was one dark area where we're showing this pile, surrounded by a lot of light-colored areas. Those light-colored areas would likely be sand and not topsoil, so it would leave a non-degraded area in the center of the site with degraded areas around this pile, which would um, be closer to Bartlett Brook and be over Air Brook. Sorry, uh, the overall of more impact and more degradation to the site than what we're claiming right now. If I could just, I read with Baltazar, but when we purchased the property, um, our understanding was that material that come in, and I hope it is, was topsoil. So we bought that all along with the property as opposed to having a previous owner take it out. And from what I'm told, that that is surplus topsoil from other jobs, not necessarily stripped from that site. It was mm -hmm. stuff that he brought in mm -hmm. and had planned on processing, you know, screening the topsoil and then reusing on other projects. So we bought the whole piece, figuring that we would do the same thing. We'll buy it with the stock. I'm thinking that that pile was actually an asset. You know, well, we're hoping it is, yeah. you know. And um, other than aesthetic, um, can you explain how this is, what the work that's being proposed is an improvement? Um, yeah. Um, okay. So uh, this purple line is what would be the extents of yeah. the stockpile area. Uh, we're proposing to install a fence uh, further inside of the area of degradation and then plantings along this bank uh, outside of or within the degraded area that this this area within the stockpile would no longer be used as part of the contractor's storage yard thereby increasing the buffer uh, to the brook you know and, and reducing the size of the degradation as well as the, the slope factor that the speed at which stormwater would flow off of the steep bank and into the brook would be higher than a, a gently created gravel surface that could trap suspended solids Voids in the gravel. Without knowing what is underneath the pile, it's possible that the entire area is just... Yes, but there's always surface runoff. Distinguishing between is this uh, uh, fully degraded according to the statute, and, and uh, therefore does the proposed word represent improvement um, according to the statute? A little hard to determine in the abstract without actually being there. And so that's just my sense of a better book. But you guys who are pros at this, you might have a more. Uh, 
educated. And I've been out there quite a few times, but never really looked at for this program in that area. And because of the vegetation, I don't know. Wouldn't pay, pay any difference to it anyway. So. Um, I would tend to agree without a site visit, we're hard pressed to make a firm decision. Pardon me? Without a site vision, I, visit, I would agree with you. I can't say one way or the other. Um, but beyond that, it seems like a degraded area to me. And it seems like a good use of the site to remove some terror. But again, without a site visit, we can't come to consensus. So I guess the uh, question. For us, is does it uh, make sense to continue to our next meeting? Would we, as far as you know, sir, in the current conditions, be able to make an assessment of much value? It's not snow covered, uh, yeah. I mean, you can see where the pile is, you won't be able to tell what's on you, what's in it, but you, without it, yeah. Now, in a perfect world, what are your plans for the site and beginning work? And um, how does this play in? Obviously, the larger. DOT project. Like if this hearing gets gets postponed, would that be a huge show for the project? I'd I'd, uh, I'd like to start cleaning up that pile if we could. The sooner the better. Obviously, just make more room uh, as the roundabout project progresses, and, and uh, we are pursuing other work in the city. <clears throat> but our our plan would be to to, to expedite us the clean up in there so we can start using it for. Uh, spring operations at the roundabout so and again if, if it is that my plan would be to get the vegetation that's on the pile off screen that material haul the tailings out use that material so and then at the time we'd be taking it from where it is now screening it so the finished product would be up further and would be hauling it out so that would be the plan for two reasons for that so we could start up in the spring but i've also got a lot of guys sitting right now so i could <laughs> I can put them to work. So, but the problem, though, is, is getting planting established. Or, uh, yes, in this mitigation area proposed here, yeah, I think it would be hard to establish right now. But in a strict area with no protection, if we get um, and we do get rain in the winter time. Um, I think uh, the installation of the fence could certainly happen to limit any uh, further uh, extension of the graded area. Uh, I, I think the idea of putting in some sort of swale or stormwater feature along that um, edge of storage yard would be something that could happen now. And hay bales and check items could be put in, in that swale at this point to at least protect uh, the brook plantings. We would definitely need to wait until the spring. So what do you think? I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's hard to imagine that uh, based on the, the photos and the description that we probably discover anything that would cause us to f feel fundamentally different. I, I, I feel a little remiss in that and I'm going to have to myself for this case. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. It feels like maybe we can address the uh, conditions. Um, sure. that, uh, like, as you just described, um, uh, erosion controls sort of above and beyond what we might otherwise require just to make sure that uh, during, until the uh, new uh, mitigation area is established, that it is the more vulnerable area. Uh, yeah. um, I agree. I think that makes the most sense. So based on the proposed project shown and the location of the fence right here, I would think a shallow swale along the base of the fence. That would be a gravel line swale. Uh, full vegetation could be established. If you prefer a grass line swale, I think either one of those could be applicable in this situation. Uh, and then a, a check dam before its outlet towards the airport. I mean, those would be the stormwater features I would first consider. Um, I probably think something like a straw model and silt fence around the whole area is they're going to be you know, moving all that material, screening it, bringing on fresh material. I, we, we are proposing a sill fence around the areas of excavation as a temporary erosion control measure, but a swale is more of a long-lasting uh, stormwater control measure. 
So we might be uh, in two stages. During the actual active excavation, we might have the temporary system, and then as soon Absolutely. as yes. practical to install the more permanent. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend the commission um, require that a plan be submitted for review and approval of the whatever the permanent stormwater feature is supposed to be. Yeah. Temporary and permanent. Yes. So the temporary is shown, so it would be the permanent shown. stormwater feature. Um, <laughs> we might, I think we'd, we'd want something, if work is planned to start now, knowing that no plantings could be installed, we'd need some additional erosion control just because there's there's a high likelihood of Could we set that as a condition? Or yeah. Think yeah. Do a quick site visit before they actually start work. Between now and the sure. next meeting, for example, to verify that it's our requirements or things that we tweak. Okay. So in that case, I uh, withdraw my expression of a desire to site visit before. Acting and um, I'll write this in the first act. Any other comments from anyone else before we close the hearing? Uh, so the motion to close. Uh, one additional thing. Um, I didn't put conditions together. I thought it might be continued, but there would be a permanent prohibition on work within the restoration area. So that would have to be recorded in the D. And that's standard yeah. for river fund mitigation. So that work in the future could a condition in order a condition in order of conditions? Yes. yes. Yep. Motion to close the hearing. I'd like to see the plan. What is what are we voting? Uh, you suggested a plan showing the temporary temporary or permanent and that those but that those could be staff approved uh, without having to come back to the full commission in a future meeting or not well i think that the temporary erosion control is going to be staff approved and then the permanent would, would come before us again mm -hmm. for the plan so at least they could proceed with their Indeed. their work and, and it's winter so they're not going to do anything permanent anyhow yeah, yeah. That's what I thought it was. So now, motion to close the hearing. So moved. And a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So let's see if we've got the uh, proper conditions identified. Um, and that we're uh, going to require um, a more aggressive temporary uh, erosion control set up to be approved by Sarah prior to beginning construction. Uh, a permanent uh, plan for the erosion control and protection of the uh, uh, resource area to come back before the commission. And stormwater. And, and stormwater. So what you just said, and stormwater. Absolutely. Um, any other uh, uh, above these normal conditions? Do, do we have to put any time frame where they need to notify Sarah of X number of days for a site visit or anything? Well, I think this, this before the beginning of construction, so that, uh, I, yeah, so the, hours this, the standard morning. conditions would require a, a construction visit prior to any work being done. So, standard conditions, I think it's 30, 30 or something, and, and the few that you just mentioned. Do you need any other sort of permit to, I was just wondering about the increased vehicular traffic and all uh, that. From what my understanding is, the zone in there where <coughs> it's industrial, so that's already all taken care of. So, we have uh, articulated the conditions we want on addition, in addition to the standard conditions. Um, if so, uh, uh, motion to approve on um, order of conditions, including standard conditions and those uh, coupled with addition. All in motion. And a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Good. Great time.
far as uh, future stormwater swale to some sort of sediment burn here? Seems like an adequate stormwater solution. A swale, a swale along the fence to direct stormwater to an area with a check dam to trap yeah. suspended solids for a, a permanent erosion control measure. And we're hoping for an increased temporary erosion control measure. Yeah, just to make sure that things are going to look different for us. Um, and whatever you propose for a permanent measure should be outside the division fund. Of course, of course. We're not familiar with stormwater, but I'm sure there's some stormwater rates and surface runoff calculations and things. Yeah, I mean, nothing, on, nothing yeah. specific is required, but you could pull a couple things over the BMP. Sure, sure. Um, and the temporary measures, we, the, the silt fence shown, is that uh, not, not appropriate? The silt fence and maybe maintaining, um, depending on the grade that's there and how much of the stockpiles, there may be maintaining an extra 10 foot area that you don't touch until. Yeah. I'd recommend silt fence and straw bottle. Yeah, I'm definitely with silt fence yeah. and straw bottle. Understood. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, thank you. Well, we have the cluster certificate of compliance. They make those kinds of uh, I take a while and look at the cutlery. Everything looks pretty good. Um, but I didn't have a way to verify the, the weapon. Same basic restoration that was done years ago and it wasn't included in the request. So, we'll talk to the applicant. So, we're going to uh, not act on that tonight? Yes. Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jason and I have decided we're not going to act on the cutlery certificate of compliance request tonight. Uh, until the conditions allow Sarah to uh, more properly. And the, the order is specifically required a certain type of well and report about the restoration, and that wasn't included. They gave us everything else. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, didn't we have something about the salt and sink during the winter, how they treat it because it was proximate to the river? Mm, not that one. So this was oh. a different color. So this was um, mitigation for the hazardous waste that accumulated during cutlery manufacturing. For long ago. For, yeah, years ago. Because this was originally in 2004? Yes. So and they couldn't close it out because additional um, issues kept being discovered. Because we, we did, we've had a couple of iterations of cutlery yeah. permitted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say there was some green soil. <laughs> so I've done work out there, just like lead and <laughs> chromium. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, a lot of heavy metals. Not, not good things, but it's not like nuclear waste or anything. Right. We have uh, 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 mineral hills. Uh, yeah, so position. this one is nothing new, but it was never formally voted on by the commission, and there's one um, title complication that required discussion. Uh, so the, we talked about this last time, but the Omasta property that's currently being farmed is proposed to be put into the APR program. Uh, the city's share of that, I think, is, is $57,000 that will come from a mix of CPA funds and the Agricultural Conservation Restriction Program. And the western portion of it, which we've discussed a lot, is backland. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 20-acre parcel that the city will be acquiring. Which piece will be looking at? So, so both of them. Uh, so the APR and then the Conservation Commission acquisition. They probably should have used red in some way. But the APR looks mostly forested in that farm, right? Uh, a large portion of it is forested. Okay. Um, but the whole area will be placed in the APR. And then the, the western portion of it, um, there, there wasn't a clear title, so we will have to do a, a taking on that from a sale that was that happened maybe 200 years ago. So that's a slight change. 200 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the current owner wasn't aware of it, the city wasn't aware of it, and it came up during a title search. So that it would be to approve the um, city share of the agricultural preservation restriction and, and also this, this friendly taking. Friendly taking? Yes. From, the from this person. That, and that's uh, is long ago. That's, that's a fee simple acquisition. It, it will be. Okay. Yeah. So it's not uh, uh, a restriction. 
whereas the other will remain in private ownership but with a uh, uh, agricultural use. Correct. Okay. Two separate votes? Um, one is okay. All right. So we want to make a motion to approve both of those? Uh, um, why do we have to approve the taking? I'm just curious. We don't. I mean, that would, I mean, not that I don't, but. It's just to make it, it's, it's probably not necessary if it's being overly cautious, but when we go to city council and we say upon the recommendation of the conservation commission to take this property, I just don't want to be surprised. I see. Okay. And is friendly taking actually a term of legal art? Consensual. Yes. Is it? I just went to Hasa. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, so once again, so no one make a motion? So then the risk is if someone shows up and says, actually, it was mine, you owe me money, but that the risk is low. But it's, is it's really low in this instance because the, um, you know, sometimes it's like one generation removed and yeah. there are heirs out there, but this was from I think, the early 1800s. Yeah. And the, the current owner and the, all of the previous owners before that, up until that one thought that they owned them. They Will owned there them. be some compensation for it? So it's for zero dollars. Uh, it's I have to look up the acquisition price, but that hasn't changed from okay. the initial. And it's landlocked back land, so it's you know. not much. Yeah. yeah, it was uh, it was back. Um, okay. So a motion to approve both of those actions? Second. And a second? Second. Any further discussion? Questions, comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. And I have nothing else. Uh-huh. Right. Sir, any well, I, was, I, was, I am Bob Sproul. I am the coordinator of the Friends of Mineral Hills. I emailed uh, you late. So. It's all right. I, I got here before your email. I didn't know. I, I know. I know nothing about this. Um, I, I maybe you can, if you will, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes and explain to me um, when an APR applies to forested land, does that become part of a a, a conservation? Um, area. I mean, so let me tell you my concern. Um, originally, Mineral Hills was just the quarry area off Turkey Hill Road, and you know, Mark Carmian and others built a nice set of trails, and there's really maintenance work is the only thing that goes on there now. Wayne and others, I think, want to expand uh, ownership of uh, uh, Northampton ownership of land in that area. That's fine. It's all being called Mineral Hills. I think, again, the reason is not to have a profusion of names of tiny little parcels here and there. That's also fine. However, I'm a little, I'm more than a little reluctant for any implicit uh, increase in what you're expecting the Friends Group, for example, to do. And this has been explicitly discussed on several occasions, but maybe this, it, it certainly hasn't been discussed on this occasion. And I'm totally confused about this transaction, about what constitutes uh, area that may be called conservation area. Obviously, the part that's still going to be farmed, I presume, under private but restricted stuff is, isn't part of conservation land. But I'm just more than a little confused about how all these trajectories go forward. Um, and if there are plans to make improvements and, and provide public access and 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 so on um it would be interesting to see how that i mean i don't, i'm not sure if it's not my responsibility but i'd be interested to see what the how all that works out sure so the the eastern portion so and the area that's currently being farmed will be retained in private ownership there won't be any public access created through right. this arrangement okay uh, what the apr will do will just permanently protect it forever and, and, right. and ensure that it will still be fine. Right. So APR is not, and has nothing to do with conservation area. It does not. No. Correct. Um, okay. It That's will helpful. still be, it's part of the mineral hills, um, but there's no city obligation, there's no obligation. For the so what does it mean to be hills. part of the mineral hills? It's, we, we're naming everything into, um, into greenways, 
Yeah. So this is part of the larger mineral health okay. complex, but that in no way implies that there's public okay. access right. or, or obligation for So this is mineral hills applied vaguely and and generally <laughs> rather yes. than just rather than yes. the name of the conservation of the of the fair, fair enough. I yes. understand everybody in mm -hmm. Roberts Hill does the same thing by yeah. the way. So and am I correct sir, that uh, I know this is true in Vermont that once uh, it's an agricultural restriction, even though it's currently forested and, uh, and only could harvest the forest and retain um, that designation. Um, yes. Or they could clear and plant and retain that designation. So they still yes. have control that is not city control. No. Okay. Exactly. Um, yeah, precisely. And, but then there's a western portion. The western portion. Yeah, so that, that 20 acre portion is proposed to be owned and feed by the city. Yes. Um, there's no trails on it that I know of currently. There, and it there doesn't abut any them. other areas at the moment? It does. I don't actually know um, exactly where, where it, we're talking about. So, and I didn't highlight the existing protected area, but this parcel, so this, so this, um, this, West Farms Road is here, yep. 66 is here. Okay. So this is the APR. This okay, one, yes, this okay, makes sense. Yep, got it. it. Okay. This is the Conservation Commission area that will be owned in fee. This is uh, a recent acquisition, the, the Galena. Okay, parcel. okay. So that it will connect. Okay, all right, I understand that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. it. You know, are things like this easy? I haven't been able to find things like this on the city's. What's a horrible website? <laughs> um, this one, so the the link at the bottom of the Conservation Commission agenda, that's really only for permits. Everything <laughs> so else is, is certainly available, um, right. but it's in different places, yeah. and you can always feel free. Okay. All right, email. thank you. I well, appreciate, I appreciate the few we, minutes. We have various, um, we think of them as partners that actually spend more time on and, and take their trails on and so forth uh, our land, quote unquote, conservation land, um, than we do. And we put well, and, and you know, and, so for and, example, and Fitzgerald Lake people we meet yeah. with all the time. And, and then there's people like Kestrel who do the stewardship, and right. you know, everybody's got their oar in, so to speak. So. Are you relevant by this? Yes. I, 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 know, yes. I know a lot about the stockpile you were talking about tonight. I have no idea what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. We're Thanks for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> it's great somebody's cleaning it up. <laughs> I don't know about to bring it out. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. In terms of uh, I know there were two parts of Mineral there. Hills, this is the, uh, the general, which Randy introduced as one of the old readers, that historic use should determine future yeah, use. Right. Um, so I assume, Sarah, this has not been specifically identified as historic hunting? So the, what, the eastern parcel will be retained in private ownership so right. they can do with it what they want. The western parcel is the one where the current owner is requiring Require. all hunting. Okay. You said all hunting? Yes. Okay. Be allowed. Allowed. So that's a condition of the sale. Interesting. So, wow. So I was more asking about our plans for a public hearing to open up those other two, to Archer, the other two parcels that we talked about. The, we were holding off on this one because we didn't want to have the hearing twice. Is this um, the one? Oh, this was the second one? Yes. I see. So this is the second one. Okay. Um, and the, the pressing need for that has gone away now that hunting season is passed as well. Or the, the primary hunting season. So let's see. Uh, do, we, do we need a public hearing? Do we, we do. Any change at all to the land use regulations requires a public hearing. And so which parcels are we taking out? Because so, um, this is not a change of this. I, but it will have to be oh, specified. Oh, I see. But the in, the, in the city plan, yeah, so now there's an additional parcel that will have And the others were Rocky Hill Green. Also, right. to include the golf course. Right. Um, this parcel in isolation would be very much fun for hunters with their, this mineral hills. Are the surrounding parcels also uh, huntable or no? So, and how would you even get to this parcel? And how would you know if you're a hunter? Where are the boundaries of the door? So, 
So we will mark those. Um, we're waiting on a survey, which hasn't come back yet, but um, it's a 20 acre rectangle, essentially. Um, you could access it from the south. Yeah, um, not from the south, from the west that's owned by the Conservation Commission or through. Oh, that's, that big parcel yeah. on the south is that? It's not. Well, we'd like it to be. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could get permission from Sarani for any prior owners. Yeah. If you try as a hunter. Um, so, and the one to the north that. That one is private. That's part of the so to this this question, um, uh, in the, the slight variation of the question: Is there benefit to uh, uh, having a hearing when we're not bumping up against summer season, and therefore? Uh, it was about a year ago. We contemplated April. Remember? Right. We contemplated April, and then we were waiting on. This parcel, which we were planning to have closed on late in 2019, but the title issue has delayed things a little bit. So we've authorized when is it likely to close? Is, is this going to be a lengthy process? Um, of we have to take title? We have to go through the, the taking process probably one month. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, like one of the. Uh, contentious things that we've run into over time has been whether to allow hunting uh, conservation and, and the uh, principle that we've come down on uh, in recent years, because the last year, is that historic use um, will, in most cases, determine the future use. And uh, in this case, for instance, where the uh, seller slash donor um, requires uh, historic use of funding to continue, then it's not uh, really an option for us to deny it if we want to acquire right. land. Uh, but about, was it six, seven years ago when we last decided we were going to change the land use regulations, which are things we have to offer, uh, to allow, and we ended up only allowing a very limited bow hunting addition to uh, what it otherwise would allow. Um, in the uh, parcel of Beaverbrook uh, and um, Nine, I think we have William Reeves, um, that um, it probably, I don't know, 150 people showed up and they're. Probably not. Extra opinions on both sides. Don't no, kill my friends. And I'm sure there's nothing in the middle. Nothing in the middle. No. Well, there was one. There was one. Uh, uh, the, the young woman who owns the uh, uh, florist in East Hampton, but lives in North Hampton. She was the one person who spoke on both sides. Like, no, oh, I, I have friends who are ours, but I understand. But, but everybody else knows it was absolutely mm -hmm. evil versus good. Um, <laughs> and, and many of them wanted us to control access to ammunition, and, you know, gun control, things, mm -hmm. not, not our purview. But, um, so that's why this is a, a sensitive topic. If we open a public hearing, we're likely to invite, if we're not careful, a similar um, event. So we want to try to narrow the scope as much as possible. But shall we just ignore it and go along as usual, or should we try to do something on purpose for it? Well, do we know if Rocky Hill was hunted at all this year, what went on up there? Uh, it, Historically, Which part of it? the part over I, near, our property was hunted. I, near Room 10, it's not was, to uh, that's the part that's been historic. The golf course right. obviously so, wasn't. Right. That, right, I was thinking the new acquisition, like a hunter would know it changed hands and they've always hunted it. We didn't post it. So. Yeah, like, we haven't acquired the golf course yet. We didn't close on that. Um, so not that very well may have been hunted this year. But I, our property is hunted every year, even though it's not supposed to be. It's not posted. I mean, it is. I mean, it's not. It's not posted like private property would be posted. But there are signs saying no hunting without permission. Uh, I did get a call. I did receive calls from a few hunters just asking, like, "Oh, can I get permission?" Like, well, not yet. It's not allowed. But a lot of people just didn't want the sign. So what do you want to do? 
just wait wait till we have to act or just schedule something in? What would prompt us to have to act? Uh, when we have to rewrite, if, we, if we're going to make any modification to the land use regulations, then we have to have a hearing. The modification would be prompted by um, a request from, say, hunters to rewrite well, that? Let's see. Well, Sarah, if we, uh, if we add a, an acquisition, like in the, the, today's case, um, where there's no, uh, uh, an additional conservation area where hunting is allowed, we have to enter that into the land use regulations? The way they're currently structured, we would, because we specifically say there is no hunting allowed except for. Except for, right, and we list it. So. I would say just make that an agenda item. Yeah, here's the parcel, I, like parcel ID, open to hunting, make an agenda item. Do a parcel, maybe a street address. Let's see what happens. <laughs> 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 I, I agree. We say we just uh, vote to continue its historic use. Yeah. Old tiny words, I guess, as hunting of land or something. <laughs> I mean, it would have to be advertised as a public hearing. As a public hearing for land use regulation modification or change. Correct. I see. <clears throat> So maybe best to, to wait. Is there a, um, a final moment when we say, okay, now it's ours, all the hurdles have been cleared, the title's been settled. And at yeah. that point, um, we, is there an opportunity to say, okay, now we have to Sure, yeah, I can, I can just let you know when the okay. final close. So when that, uh, when that happens, we'll act, I think it is fine to have not a major special hearing, yeah. just yeah. an agenda yeah. item saying, okay, we, we now uh, have to, uh, um, uh, rewrite or add to amend um, the Why don't we just regulations? change the regulations to re reflect the historical use will be stuff. allowed on um, all future properties acquired by the Conservation Commission or the city? So that could be well, but there could be historic uses that we disagree with theoretically, right? If the owner doesn't require it, we could say no, it's uh, yeah. for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah, I mean, somebody may be hunting a, a parcel that really doesn't make sense to hunt. It's too small, and maybe not legal to hunt there. Okay, so I'll follow up on those two when we close on those two parcels. So we'll schedule it at that time, just as a normal agenda. If we're in a meeting, we won't have a special hearing. Right. That makes sense. to see <laughs> Um, anything else? Anybody? So, uh, how about we take three or four minutes and just say who we are? Is that like, yeah, you, you know, you were, you were described by Jessica before she left as, as a colleague. Yes. Uh, I assume that. Yes. Uh, so, I uh, did my master's at the Under the State Advisors, Jessica at UMass. Uh -huh. um, and I moved away, did some water uh, hydro hydrologic hydrology consulting work out in Seattle, Washington for a few years. Did some research as a Fulbright Fellow in India on water treatment in rural communities for a few years, or for a year, I can say. And now I'm back working at UMass uh, as a, cons as a uh, project manager in the environmental engineering department doing water resource management uh, projects generally, globally. Um, so it's been a couple of years since I've gotten into the, the weeds of things like the uh, stormwater runoff regulations, as, so much fun. as you noted. Um, but you know, my background's in, in water, and I've done a few different uh, things so far in that. So I'm looking forward, you know, this has been, so this is the first meeting I've attended, obviously, as a commissioner, but in general, and it's just been, um, we just bought, my wife and I just bought a house in Northampton, uh, two summers ago, so it's uh -huh. some, you know, feeling like I'm really joining. looking forward to joining and joining okay. the, well, the reins of the decision makers and having an impact here in town. So, Elizabeth, well, want to say a couple of words about I'm um, not an engineer, I'm a lawyer. I, um, I work for the Department of Fish and Game as a chief of wildlife land, so we do a lot of land acquisition for wildlife habitat and hunting, and um, uh, stewardship issues that come up. 
I've uh, lived in our for many years, so more of a um, land acquisition person than an engineer. And uh, I have no technical training in any of this stuff. Uh, I've, uh, I've been, this is nine years now, something like that, that I've been on more, the more than that. Is it 10? I, I've been here 10, oh. so, so more than that. And uh, I was here just before you, so I, I didn't realize it in that long, but yeah, so, so I, 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 I've been around, but I'm just a retired business guy. Um, and uh, but you, 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 you used to spend a lot of time on airplanes and being only theoretically part of Northampton, even though we moved here in 1977. So um, uh, it's only in the last, I guess, 11 years that I've been more active in that. Mason, on the other hand, has been around <laughs> not the commission since God. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. maybe Saul. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is my 40, 30 year commission. So he said, I want to see the Wellington location. You better provide a yeah, location. <laughs> well, I, I, I used to work for a small engineering company as, a, as their in house well consultant. After joining the Conservation Commission way back then, well, I said, well, hey, you're on a commission. Why don't you do this stuff instead of me I'm filling out those sections? And you're a UMass guy as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a degree in wildlife biology from UMass. I graduated in 67. Yeah, we're old. Jason? Yeah, I worked at Time Bonds. I was an environmental scientist. So I mostly do contaminated site assessment, um, a lot of some wetlands work, a lot of work with dam removals and sediment management, soils management and remediation, kind of a little bit of everything. Okay. And I work with, with Mary and, mm -hmm. and Jessica who were here earlier. So I was here for it. So it's a it's a, a, a good group from yeah. whom I learn a lot and uh, Jack and Jack and Randy. And Jack and Randy mm -hmm. uh, meet. Uh, um, Randy is another business guy, uh, uh, more like me, decided to retire in my family. Um, and uh, Jack is the, 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 the founder and owner of A to Z, the store down on King Street, which is yeah. a science, science. store. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so he's always been a, sort of a, a, an interested Interested in science rather than a professional scientist, uh, but uh, a good, thoughtful Northampton native. So mm -hmm. when you say, "Oh, well, this is happening in that neighborhood," Jack will know that neighborhood and who you sold it for two generations ago. So uh, it's a uh, it's a good mix of people. Yeah, it's great to see that such diversity of backgrounds and, and occupations yeah. that are here. No, it's, it's an amazing group of well, learned people. You know, I've seen all the commissions, and believe me, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on with this one as far as conservation and backgrounds. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I feel lucky, so it's uh, welcome aboard. Thank you. Oh, Anything Jack's else? Jack's also our uh, CPA. That's right, he's a uh, community preservation liaison for uh, the commission. So he helps us get money for. CPA funds for various things. But uh, are we otherwise adjourned? Anything else? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you.